Hey guys, Cody from Kodiak Fishing, and I want to introduce you to my new pedal drive kayak. This here is the Hoodoo Voyager 100P. It is 10 foot, 3 inches long, 34 inches wide, and weighs 62 pounds. And the total price of this kayak, which does include the seat and the drive, is only 1200 bucks. So, before we start the little bow to stern tour, let me talk about why I bought this particular kayak. That cat's trying to eat a bolt. <laughs> Guess he needs more iron in his diet, huh? All right, let's talk about what I was looking for in a kayak. Uh, number one, uh, going back and forth on the fin drive versus propeller drive. I chose a propeller drive just for the instant reverse function. Now I know uh, Hobie has that little pull cord, uh, what do they call it, the 180 drive. And now they have that 360 drive, which I don't have four grand to spend in a kayak to get that. So here we are. Uh, with the pedal drive, you get instant reverse. And to me, I feel like I have a lot more control with the propeller style drive kayak. Uh, another reason why I bought it, it is the hull is light. Without the, seat or the, or without the seat or the drive, it only weighs 62 pounds. So I'm able to pick it up over my head real easy, load it on top of the roof rack of my car. And I'm able to carry it to the bank pretty easy too, even though I am getting the kayak cart for it to save my back. All right, well, so <clears throat> uh, before I really get into this video as well, before we start the uh, walkthrough, um, I went ahead and had this kayak out yesterday. Now I had my action camera with me and I had some videos of me pedaling it around, standing up, jumping on it. But for some reason, the little SD card in it, I think might be corrupt because the files wouldn't transfer. So I'm recording this on my phone now. So if it's lower quality or if the wind noise is too bad, I apologize. But this is just going to be a quick little walkthrough deal. All right. So starting at the front, we got the standard carry handle here. A locking front hatch. Pop this open to reveal this little sleeve in here. Now I got my straps in here. I use to tie the kayak to the car. I just keep them in here to keep them out of the way. You can remove this and have access to the hull. Now, I had waves crashing over this boat yesterday and I had it out for about four hours and this is all the water that I got in it. That's it. So, a really watertight hull. I'm not gonna say it was the calmest day on the water, but. All right, so here's the drive. This uh, Hoodoo drive is just like the uh, Propel drives on the Natives. The reason I know that is I watched a video of somebody maintaining one of these and I watched a video of somebody doing maintenance on a propel drive and they look extremely similar on the inside. So if anybody that knows the native watercraft propel drive, they are very reliable. They hold up. Let me go ahead and get this drive propped up here so I can pedal it and give you guys a little sound check. No abnormal sounds. No squeaking, no grinding, really smooth. Now the only, uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm attention to detail kind of guy. I'm actually an inspector by trade. And if you look real close, you can see, I mean, it's got a little bit of casting blemishes to it, but you know, that's not gonna affect the function of it. If this kayak is a thousand dollars cheaper because it has a few little blemishes on the drive, hey, I'll take it. All right, so to remove the drive, I'll show you real quick. Uh, if you wanna take the drive out, you got these little push pins here. A little carry handle for the drive and pop it right out. So it's easy to turn this into a paddle only kayak. Okay, so on each side here, you got a couple of sacrificial plates that are already pre-drilled to accept these Scotty bases. So you don't have to drill any holes or holes in the hole of the kayak. You just can just pop this plate off, attach the rod holder, and pop these in. Now, these are not screwed into the hull. These are actually in some brass inserts, and the brass inserts are molded into like a pocket into the hull. So there's no direct, there's no way you could pour gallons of water on this, and there's no way water's going to get in the hull. Very watertight. A couple of accessory gear tracks. You want to mount a fish finder, cup holder, anything like that. You are able to either use the pre-installed little slides here, M6 bolt, or you're able to take off these uh, end caps here and slide any accessory you want on. Uh, I like the center console. I'm going to get this drive out of the way real quick. Center console is really nice. It seems it's built pretty tough. Some people said it was flimsy, but it, it's pretty tough here. 
excuse me, I'm kind of fighting a bit of a head cold, guys, so you got a gasket that Hoodoo installed around here because they had some complaints of water seeping up through at high speeds. Um, I had a little bit of water coming up, but it actually wasn't from uh, the console itself. It was from these holes that the elastic bands pass through. But not a lot of water at all. Not even enough to get my feet real wet. So you got these foam hats all the way through the kayak. Um, I imagine if uh, come hot summer days and you're barefoot, it makes it comfortable to stand. Not only that, but it's it deadens the sound of anything you drop in your kayak so you don't scare away any fish. Uh, with the center console, I'm going to go back to it real quick. I think what I'm going to do in the future is super glue some magnets down in here, probably some hot glue or something. That way I can throw hooks and baits and anything metallic on there is going to stick to it and uh, not accidentally fall out. The seat here, and I was out for four and a half hours and not, I wasn't uncomfortable at all. I was in comfort all day long. Really nice seat. You're able to slide forward and backward a good foot. I'm six foot three, and this seat was about right here. So you could probably be six foot five and still be pretty comfortable in this short 10 foot three inch boat. Rudder control handle here, so you can see the rudder's doing this thing. You got a lot of under the seat storage. I plan on putting uh, some kind of little bucket here, square bucket or something. Maybe put a track here. I could put some kind of ball bearing track mount maybe in the future. I don't know yet. I, I still got ideas floating in my head and I'm not, I'm not gonna jump on them right away because who knows, I might change my mind in a week or so. A couple of flush mounted rod holders back here. And if, I don't know if I mentioned it, but every accessory in this boat, it's attached by a brass insert. Even these rod holders, I took them out and verified there's brass inserts in here. So it's really, really stout. Little D-rings back here to attach a seat. I don't have the bungee out right now, but that's just to kind of attach a seat on there. Rear hatch, so you unlock it and it's got a, kind of pops out. Here's a fish finder I'm gonna be using in the future. I'm actually waiting in the mail on a, a mounting system for the transducer and the unit itself to mount on the front rail here, the track mount. Here's my kayak anchor here from my old kayak, just an old dive reel from Amazon. I think I paid 15 bucks for it. And went to Walmart and just picked up this five pound weight. I mean, this is three bucks and an anchor was probably 15, so I grabbed this. Got bungee cords back here to secure any gear. Here's the rudder hat here and the first negative about the boat. So I'm not sure if you could tell and I can't get the camera low enough, but the top of this rudder here uh, protrudes out up further than the surface of the hull. So if you lay something flat back here, like a cooler or a hard tackle box, it's going to rub. So I'm going to have to create something to lift it up a bit. Drain hole back here. Drain plug, rather. So if you get any condensation in the boat or take on any water at all, you're able to drain it out. Rear carry handle. And we'll take a look at the rudder. Just like native watercraft, it's got the under the boat rudder, so you're not worried about deploying or bringing a rudder up or crashing it into something when you're uh, launching and not launching. And the rudder sets up just higher than the keel right here, so this rudder is protected. And one thing I like what Hoodoo did at a, with this kayak at this price point is they actually used a uh, plastic coated steel cable for their rudder control instead of that cheap like braided line shot cord. And we got the whole ID here that's Phillips head screwdriver to the hole of the boat. It's a little metal tack too, not just a stick on one. Got a paddle keep here. Um, this one's cheap and gintzy. When I had my paddle here, it was constantly flopping up and down. So I think I'm just gonna order, you know, the yak attack one that bolts directly to the hull here and the paddle just clips in. And here's the accessory track on this side and what I was talking about, how you can remove this little end cap. This is an old rod holder base from my older uh, lifetime kayak. See, it's got that little T-bolt there that a lot of the uh, accessories have. So slide that right on, screw it down, and you're locked in. Got a handle on each side here you can grab onto, a nice hard handle. The sacrificial plate and rod holder on this side here. And yeah, that's pretty much the tour of this kayak. So this kayak's only $1,200. 
and I believe it's probably the most well-built $1,200 kayak you can get. Do one more quick once over. And I got a million ideas, guys, floating in my head. Feel free to leave a comment. Give me some ideas. We need a name for this boat here. I think one of two names. The Mighty Minnow or the Super Guppy. What do y'all think? I'll show you the underside of the kayak too with just... You see how it has that uh, pontoon style hull? Very, very stable. All right, well, I can't wait to get this on the water and show you guys firsthand how great this kayak is on the water for the price. That's probably gonna happen this weekend. I'm filming this on a Wednesday. So hopefully a new video is gonna come out uh, probably a week from today. That's, that's the hope anyways. Again, this is the Hoodoo Voyager 100P. If you guys are in the market for a lightweight, portable pedal drive kayak that's really easy on the budget, I highly recommend it. All right, guys, that's all. If you have any questions or comments, maybe I left something out, feel free to ask in the comment section. I'll get back to you. As always, guys, thanks for watching.